along with the flow that I've been discussing, one thing that's very interesting is that every grassroots movement brings a counterculture. And to bring a counterculture, you need to have a thorough critique of the present culture that exists. So in the 30th Jews, especially these Makki Surahs, they are a very harsh critique of the pagan society of the Quraysh. For example, وَيْلُوا لِلْمُطَفِّفِينَ Destruction is for those who cheat in business. بِأَيِّ ذَمِّنْ قُتِلَ Why do you kill this child girl? أَرَأَيْتَ الَّذِي يُكَذِّبُ بِالدِّينَ فَذَلِكَ الَّذِي يُعْلِيَةٍ If you see the one who denies the judgment, he's the one who pushes away the orphan. What, what, these are not, you know, these are pointing fingers in that society, at the flaws of that society. When they would go and raid uh, the villages of innocent people and take and plunder their money. So all, the Qur'an is not only giving them da'wah, but the Qur'an is doing a fantastic job at a very human level, like no one can say, you know, killing a girl is okay, at least at the level of fitrah. The Qur'an is poking at their fitrah and saying, why are you doing this in your society? Why are you allowing this in your society? This is not natural in your society. And the Qur'an is poking at them, and the Qur'an is poking at the elite especially, that are, that are you know, creating a caste system of the of the you know the slaves with the the people on top with the ashraf you can say and the and this the mamluks the ashraf and the mamluks the 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 people that are that are getting richer over the blood and the sweat of the poor so the quran does a very strong critique of that society so that's one thing that i wanted to mention now we, uh, i'm going to talk about zakat but when i get to sutul shams and sutul layl because that topic is connected with that um, what I want to talk about is Surah Al-Ala and Surah Al-Ghashiyah. These are twin surahs. Surah Al-Ala talks about the process of creation. And Surah Al-Ghashiyah talks about examples of creation. Sabihisma Rabbika. By the way, when there is a ba with sabbih, sabbih this kasra, it's usually referring to tasbih. If it doesn't have a kasra, has a fatha or something else, it's referring to he's pure from or he's perfect from. Like Subhanallah. Right, he's perfect for me. But sabbih hisma, sabbih, you sabbihu, when there's a kasra, it's referring to a tasbih. Anyway, sabbih hisma rabbika la'ala, glorified is your, perfect is your Allah who is most high. Sabbih hisma rabbika, sisters, thank you. Sabbih hisma rabbika la'ala, now the process of creation. Alladhi khalaka fasawwa, who created and fashioned. وَالَّذِي قَدَّرَ فَهَدَى And then he gave it its قُدْرَة, its nature, its destination, its measurement, its value. قُدْقَدْر means value. مَا قَدْرُ اللَّهَ قَدْرِ Value, its value. And then finally, it guide, Allah guided it to its final, and towards its final destination. So these are the process of creation. And then after that, Allah gives the example of grass that grows, it comes out, and then it becomes old. Even though this ayah could also be talking about Butha and Ahwa can also be referring to the black uh, oil, oil that's found in the ground. It could be referring to that. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about a very important ayah that's very misunderstood. سَنُقْرِيُكَ فَلَا تَنْسَى إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ اللَّهِ سَنُقْرِيُكَ O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, we will make you read Qur'an. فَلَا تَنْسَى You will not forget إِلَّا مَا شَاءَ Allah except what Allah wants. This is sometimes understood to mean that we will give you the Qur'an and you'll forget the Qur'an except what Allah wants. It's not what it means. This is the point. You will be given the Qur'an, you won't forget. Illa masha'Allah, other than the Qur'an, you will forget other things. Other than the Qur'an, and this is it, it, the proof that this, because the Prophet was a human being, people would see, oh, Prophet in, in, when he was leading prayers. Sometimes he read one prayer more. His Sahabi said, you prayed an extra prayer. Did the prayer change? In other things, he would forget. Like a normal human being forgets, especially a very busy human being that has a thousand things to do and a thousand concerns. Sanukriyuka falat and But this Quran you will never forget. But other than this, you may forget something. Sanukriyuka falat and sa illa masha'Allah. Then after this, the discussion is if you, and this is the beginning of this discussion. 
سَنُيَسْتِرُهُ لِلْيُسْرَى We will make Islam, if you follow Islam, if you just come to it, we'll make it easier for you and easier for you and easier for you. And this is the beginning of this discussion. This goes all the way till Surah al uh, Surah al uh, Layl and Surah al Shams, and then again in Surah al Nashrah, the same subject comes again. In Surah al Ala, the emphasis is on the Quran. In Surah al Ghashia, the emphasis is on the Prophet. So these, uh, this is how they complement one another. And also, you know, in many of the important occasions, including Juma khutbahs, the Eid, khut, uh, the Eid prayers, the Juma prayers, the Prophet used to read these two surahs. Why? Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions in, in this, فَذَكِّرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ Sorry, وَذْكُرْ إِسْمَ رَبِّهِ Then what? فَصَلَّى So remember Allah and then pray. Like you do in Juma, you remember Allah, you do the khutbah, and then you pray. So this is the also. Another link with salah is سَبِّهِ إِسْمَ رَبِّكَ الْأَعْلَى In the ruku you're saying, سُبْحَانَ رَبِّيَ الْأَعْلَى So these are some things to consider. Anyway, so the ghashiyah, again, it is talking about punishment on the face. This is when the, it's talking about punishment. It's specifically talking and focusing on how your face will be punished. Hal ataka hadithul ghashiyah. Wujuwun yawma idhin ghashiyah. Faces, they will be overwhelmed. Okay. Wujuwun yawma idhin ghashiyah. Aamilatun nasiba. Tasla naran The fire will be touching the faces. So this kind of uh, example is given. And then for Jannah. Jannah. Uh, uh, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. For Jannah, He said. Fi jannatin aaliyah. Jannah. Your guard. You won't be in Jannah. You will be like on a you will be in a high place, meaning like a hill of some sort, from which water comes down, right? So you will have this garden uh, like that. Jannah, in, Jannah is described in detail. Then after that, then it, over there was the process of nature. Here is examples of nature, where Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, Do you not see the camel? How we made it? These are animals that every single aspect of their body is used for something beneficial. You know, the, like the palm, especially in Arabia, like the palm tree, the the cow, the camp, every single, their skin, their shoes, their hair, everything has some benefit, right? So, Not only is he giving you so many, even when he's dead, he's giving you benefits. أَفَلَا يَنْظُرُونَ إِلَى الْإِبِلِ كَيْفَ خُلِقَتْ وَإِلَى السَّمَاءِ كَيْفَ رُفِعَتْ And the sky, how we have raised it. وَإِلَى الْأَرْضِ كَيْفَ سُطِحَتْ And the earth, how we have spread it. Right? So Allah is giving you examples of this and then it comes back to the Prophet ﷺ, Muhammad ﷺ. Your job is to convey clearly after that it's between Allah and them. So this is Surah Al-Ghashiyah uh, and Surah Al-A'la and Surah Al-Ghashiyah. These are twin surahs. Then after this is Surah Al-Fajr and Surah Al-Bal now, Surah Al-Fajr uh, uh, is referring to a few things. That First of all, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is talking about the past nations. One thing that I want to mention that there has been some discussion in Jungian psychology, a special psych uh, psychologist named Carl Jung, who talks about archetypes. And one of the archetypes, have you ever seen a picture of a man sitting on a rock and thinking? You ever seen that statue? There is some discussion in psychology. It's, it's not very broad, but... There is some discussion in psychology that when you sit on a rock, when you sit on a rock, it helps you think deep for some reason. Now, why or why not? But I'm bringing the connection here. Hajar in Arabic means, Hajar means, Hajar aswad is what? Stone. Hijar, which is the same root word, means intelligence, deep thinking. And so maybe Allah alam, because I was reading about the, the, the archetypes, and this is one of the archetypes. Maybe sitting on a stone helps you uh, think deeply and therefore the same root word is meaning stone as well as thinking deep. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, is in this is there not an oath for the one who has intelligence? But the word used for intelligence is also means stone. Okay? Meaning thabat, you have some stability, so on and so forth. And then Allah continues, Alam tara kaifa fa'ala rabbuka bihaad irama dhat al-imad allati lam yuflaq mithluha fil-bilad wa thamud al-lazina jabu al-sahra bil-wad wa fir'awna al-awtad Then what was their problem? Al-lazhi taghaw fil-bilad All of these people, they rebelled. They were rebellious. Then, al-lazhi taghaw fil-bilad fa'aktharuhum fil-fisad Most of them were in fasad. So this is the collective. But then Allah zooms into the individual. The individual that leads to that bigger type of problem. 
And Allah says, فَأَمَّا الْإِنسَانُ إِذَا مَبْتَلَاهُ And the man when we test him, فَأَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ أَكْرَمًا When he thinks wealth is everything. And by the way, one of the main themes of this part of the Qur'an particularly, from here till Surat uh, Al-Adiyat, one of the main themes is going to be money. Money is being discussed in contrast to the Day of Judgment. So, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذَا أَكْرَمَهُ وَنَعَمَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَكْرَمًا When I honor him and give him money, he says, oh, Allah has honored me. He believes. He says, Allah has honored me. وَأَمَّا إِذَا قَدَرَ عَلَيْهِ رِزْقَهُ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّي أَهَانًا And when I restrict his, 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 his income a little bit, he says, Allah has forced Why did you do this to me? Why did this happen to me? كَلَّا بَلْ لَا تُكْرِمُونَ الْيَتِيمِ If this is your standard of honor and dishonor, that how much you have, then you are not of those people that can honor the orphan. And you'll even, if it comes to it, you'll even eat up other people's inheritance. And you love wealth with great intensity. And this is, like I said, a major theme in this part of the 30th juz. So this is Sutul Fajr. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala after this describes Jannah again, but I will uh, skip that. Sutul Balad, very interesting, very interesting, very interesting surah. On the one side you have people that love money and it comes in between them and their normal natural fitrah, their nature, right? The nature that Allah wants you to be. Which is what? That when you see somebody poor, some yateem, when you see the poor, when you see somebody less than you, you have empathy for them, you care for them. And one of the most interesting things, of course, Allah says, لا أقسم بهذا البلد Allah, O Prophet of Allah, I don't swear by the city, or I do swear by the city. Both uh, meanings are true. But anyway, that Allah says, after mentioning His you know, favors upon us, do you not think I look at you? Did I not give you eyes? Did I not give you a tongue and a lip? After mentioning all these things, then Allah says something very interesting. Look at that person, that person, like Abu Bakr. Before he accepted Islam, when he saw poor people, he wanted to help them. The Prophet, when he saw poor people, before he was Muslim, before Islam came to him, he wanted to help them. This Surah Al-Balad is about Abu Bakr, by the way. This is about Abu Bakr, the Surah. Anyway, so the point is, because they would feel the pain of others, and then Allah says, 